This reading from uh, New York Times, I mean the Time Magazine uh, this week, um, reminds us of how um, the Trump administration tries to cover up its deeds by pointing over here, pointing over there, pointing up there, pointing down there at other people uh, to take, distract us from things. Uh, they're blaming people for not stopping riots, they're blaming uh, governors, they're blaming the uh, forces and the policemen themselves. Uh, saying they're weak, and that's not the important thing. The important thing is that Trump is supposed to be overseeing something like seven trillion dollars worth of um, monies to help develop the country in the wake of this uh, coronavirus. And he said he would be totally in charge of it, and he's made sure of it because he's killing off the watchdogs. Okay, let's uh, read this article. It's called uh, Trump's War on Watchdogs. And watchdogs are the people who are willing to spend, stand up to uh, regimes or governments or departments and say what is, what is wrong, what's going wrong, who's abusing what. This is not right, this is not efficient, this is a waste of money, this is a waste of this. And Trump continues to get rid of watchdogs. Here's a summary of what happened in uh, uh, April and May of this year. Uh, but this has been going on longer than that. But it was in March that Trump promised he would be the watchdog of all watchdogs to see that the money was not wasted. And so far, that hasn't been the case. Um, Trump's War on the Watchdogs by John Walcott. When President Trump fired State Department Inspector General Steve Linick on May 15th, it wasn't the first time he had taken aim at a government watchdog in recent weeks. It wasn't even the second since April... Trump has fired or replaced four inspectors general, part of a broader campaign that rolls back post-Watergate government accountability measures. In other words, it's a war on the Watergate rules that were set up so that a president doesn't abuse power. In Linux's case, Trump acted on the recommendation of Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, as Pompeo himself later confirmed. Let's get this straight. So any uh, little dude from Kansas who uh, has already got the American more trouble than we we want and uh, like this Pompeo guy uh, can come up to the president and say get rid of that watchdog because he's uh, I don't know looking after me making sure I'm not doing right things this is what Trump's allowing to happen uh, the congressional Democrats are questioning the reasons behind uh, Pompeo's recommendation they say Linux office was in the middle of an investigation that involved Pompeo personally Inspectors general uh, operate independently inside federal agencies to investigate allegations of political interference, wasteful spending, and other abuses of power. Not long ago, such allegations would have been sent to the center of political establishment and shook things up. But under this uh, Trump administration, no one seems to care, uh, media-wise or administratively. Congress, the uh, Senate, uh, excuse me, has no oversight, is not undertaking its uh, constitutional oversight. Congressional Democrats are looking into claims that would cast suspicion on the reason for removal of Linick, who had been the State Department Inspector General since 2013. House staffers say Linick was investigating a complaint from State Department officials that Pompeo misused department staff, asking them to perform personal errands for him and his wife, including fetching their dog from the groomer and picking up takeout food, etc., uh, instead of security. Hmm. Anyway, Congress is also looking into whether the dismissal was linked to the President's May 2019 decision to clear the way to sell $8.1 billion of U.S. weapons to Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates by declaring a state of emergency with Iran. That was last year. Did you get that? Both Republicans and Democratic lawmakers balked at the proposal say, sale following Trump's emergency declaration. They couldn't believe it. Which This all came less than a year after U.S. intelligence concluded that the Saudi, Saudi regime had ordered the murder of Washington Post columnist Jamal Khashoggi and amid reports of U.S.-made weapons being used to kill civilians in Yemen. Um, I've learned there, are, there may be another reason for IG Linux firing, Ingo tweeted. His office was investigating at my request Trump's phony declaration of an emergency so he could send weapons to Saudi Arabia. Pomp 
you know, remember Saudi Arabia has, has promoted and supported Trump out of, bailed him out of many things. And so this is why we are all concerned about Saudi interference in American governments and oversight right now. Pompeo told reporters on May 20th that claims he had requested Linux dismissal and retaliation for some investigation were patently false. While the allegations remain unproven, shielding Pompeo from oversight would undermine the foundation of our democratic institutions. Engel and Senator Robert Menendez, the ranking Democrat on the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, said in a May 16th statement announcing a joint investigation in, into Linux dismissal. Installing political loyalists in key positions, refusing to let officials testify before congressional committees, and leaving top posts vacant or occupied by officials in an acting capacity are part of a campaign to reduce accountability. And this president has been doing it full time for nearly four years. Uh, and Liz Hempovitz, director of the public policy at the Project on Government Oversight notes, this is exactly how the inspector general system is not supposed to work. It's not supposed to work like this. So what can Trump do even in the next few months if he continues to allow money to be misused, abused, um, and the laws of this country to be ignored in all kinds of ways? Um, He's trying to create a war on the states right now by saying all the states are responsible for the violence and stuff, and at the same time he's fanning the flames. He promoted uh, protesters around state capitals with guns uh, earlier this spring, and now he's saying go the other way and shoot protesters. Uh, this is not the president of the United States that anybody really wants to have in office. It's about time to kick him out, and we need to pay attention to all his foibles and memorize them so that you will not let your neighbor allow Trump to last after November of this year. He needs to go to jail. Anyway, uh, in April, Trump also fired Michael Atkinson, the Intelligence Committee Inspector General, and Department of Defense Acting Inspector General uh, Glenn Fine, thus removing Fine from his post as head of the Pandemic Response Accountability Committee, which oversees some $2 trillion in coronavirus relief aid. And on May 1st, Trump said he would replace Deputy of Health and Human Services Senior Deputy IG Christy Grimm, who drew Trump's ire after releasing an April report that said hospitals were experiencing severe shortages of testing supplies and extended waits for test results during the pandemic. In some corners of Washington, Trump's moves to curtail the watchdog's work are welcomed as part of a long-running vision of return to a more muscular executive branch. It has been supported by Attorney General William Barr and Senator Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, among others. So far, only a handful of Republicans have questioned Lennox firing. On May 18th, Senator Chuck Grassley of Iowa the senior Republican in the Senate and a longtime champion of the Inspector General, demanded that the President explain Lennox's dismissal, writing Trump that the government's in-house watchdog should be free from partisan political interference from either the executive branch or the legislative branch. Others see Trump's move as part of a crisis that is gathering force under the co cover of unprecedented public health emergency of COVID-19. In other words, it's a uh, as COVID distracts us, as whatever else Trump gets into this summer distracts us, uh, this issue is still there and we need to pay attention to it. Save the watchdogs from abuse and let them investigate and do their jobs to make sure this country is run legally, fairly, and no more laws are breaking willy-nilly by this president. Hempovitz of the Project on Government Oversight likens the effect of Trump's actions to a frog being boiled alive so slowly that it doesn't jump out of the pot. So, so far we've treated this uh, shooting or killing off of um, IGs, Inspector Generals, uh, you know, as something, well, this is Trump and we can't control it. But it's, we need to say this is a dangerous. Our whole country is being cooked in a boiling pot. I'll say it again. Under this administration, the country is being cooked in a boiling pot. We don't even need to be a frog. We could be a full-blown pig, if you want to use that for imagination. Uh, we're being all boiled, and we don't know it.
and we need to tell our cousins and friends and neighbors uh, what's going on and say pay attention to what's going on behind that curtain that's a dangerous thing going on over there unless Congress steps up in a bipartisan way soon uh, she says the effects of this will persist for several decades and I suggest you guys all become members of the Project on Government Oversight, POGO, P-O-G-O. Get their emails and get up-to-date information. Uh, you should have it. Uh, that's the final comment I'll make about Trump's war on watchdogs. And uh, note that POGO, the Project on Government Oversight, is run by formal generals and former government officials uh, who are concerned about waste in government. They're, uh, again, also worried about illegal and horrible acts of funding and misspending and mistreatment of, of watchdogs. So I want you to support POGO, uh, Project on Government Oversight, and others at this time and make sure that the watchdogs are protected in America. And uh, don't let your friends vote for Trump. Love you. Bye.